this sort of situation is never going to happen again because we have all these fiat assets that are being depreciated and everyone knows it's happening. And now we have this little small door called Bitcoin and people are starting to go through this small door. And that's why the Bitcoin price is up, I don't know, 50% or 60% this year already as now we have the institutional investors saying, yeah, I understand this game is rigged. I helped rig the game. Now I have a product where I can get out of this mess that I created, get me the fuck out of government bonds. I want some of this Bitcoin too. And so now everyone's competing to get in this little door and that's why the price is going up. So this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We have a system reset and we have a way to preserve wealth in the old system and bring it into the new system. And that's what crypto is. Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, has expressed his delight at the exceptional performance of the firm's spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund ETF and reiterated his bullish stance on Bitcoin's long-term viability. In a March 27th interview with Fox Business, Fink highlighted the remarkable success of the A-Shares Bitcoin Trust, IB8, labeling it as the fastest growing ETF in history. Fink noted that the performance of IBIT had even exceeded his expectations with impressive results observed over the first 11 trading weeks. IBIT experienced a robust start, accumulating $13.5 billion in flows within this period, reaching a daily high of $849 million on March 12th. According to Farsight investors, IB consistently averages over $260 million in inflows per trading day. Expressing his surprise and satisfaction, Fink remarked on the creation of a market with enhanced liquidity and transparency. He emphasized that such a level of retail demand was unforeseen before IBIT was launched. When questioned about IBIT's performance, Fink responded affirmatively, stating, Yes, definitely. I'm very bullish on the long-term viability of Bitcoin. Currently, IBIT holds $17.1 billion in Bitcoin, according to Bidim Research, achieving the $1 billion milestone within just two months, a feat that took the first gold ETF two years to accomplish. Among currently approved ETFs, IBIT trails only the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust in Bitcoin Holdings, which stands at $23.6 billion in BTC. Despite Grayscale's declining Bitcoin holdings, down from 620,000 BTC before converting to a spot Bitcoin ETF, the nine spot Bitcoin ETF issuers, excluding Grayscale, collectively hold over $34.1 billion in Bitcoin. Notably, IBIT, the Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund, FBTC, and ARC2 shares Bitcoin ETF RB lead in inflows. So for those who just want to like close their eyes and buy something that's crypto safe, I'm not saying that's, you know, there's no risk here. I would say Bitcoin and Ethereum are where you should start your journey. And once you say, okay, maybe there's some things I think these protocols could do better, or I've been hearing some things about these exciting new, very smart people building something, then you start going down the rabbit hole of, of other coins that do other things and obviously have more risk because they're experimenting more. For people who are saying, I want to make big gains in a short period of time, Bitcoin might not do it for them. They say, well, I need the, the next new, new, new thing. And so they start trading whatever the new shiny bauble is that's being sold out there in, in crypto. Land. There's nothing wrong with that. You just recognize what you're trying to do. If you're saying, I want to save in a ultrasound money, then yes, the volatility is not a good or bad thing for Bitcoin. It's, it will go down over time as the asset class gets bigger. If you're saying, I need the volatility, I'm a professional trader, this is what I'm here for, then there will always be a new thing to trade because the great thing about crypto is it's this the only free market left where humans are expressing themselves and whatever it is we think is valuable. There's no manipulating force with you know an unlimited bag of fiat currency that's telling us what is a good and or bad investment. And so there will always be volatile things within the crypto ecosystem so long as there's human beings trading it. And then I guess we'll have machines too soon, these AI operators uh, in the ecosystem. More fundamental, we are gamblers, everyone, all the time, constantly, because we don't know what the future holds. Um, so let's take an example, and I wrote this in a previous essay. So imagine you're going to be, there's a building, you walk into the building, you can either take the stairs or take an elevator. Um, so the stair, taking the stairs, using your own feet, walking up is safer than the mechanical thing, which is an elevator. But walking up the stairs takes more energy than riding up the elevator. So what do you do? Well, your brain 
you know, whether you're conscious of it or not, is constantly evaluating the probability that if I do one of these things, will there will there be harm that comes to me? And is the probability of that harm outweighed by the gain, whether it's time or energy, by using one or the other modes of transportation? And so you're gambling. You don't know what, do you know if this elevator is going to break down and fall 30 flights uh, in an instant? No, but you believe that there has been a um, credible engineer that's designed this piece of technology, that there's a government building codes that govern how it's been installed and how it's been maintained. So the risk of me taking this elevator, even though I don't know if it's going to fail when I get on it, is very, very low. Therefore, I will take the elevator because it's faster and less energy spent than walking up the stairs to the top of the building. Right. So we gamble all day, every day, because the future is unknown. So for people to say that, oh, markets are bad because it's gambling. No, your whole life is a gamble. You do not know what's going to happen one moment to the next you are constantly assigning a probability to the future. And that's what the market is. The market is for a particular thing. What does the crowd say the probability of the future of this company building this product, making this money or this asset being worth whatever it's worth in the future? What did the crowd think? That's what the market is telling us. And the market gives us great signals as to what the crowd actually thinks because we're putting our money on the line. And what is money? Money is just energy and our time in an abstracted form. That's why money is the most important thing in any society, because if you degrade the value of money, you degrade someone's time and their effort and their energy. And it's, you know, it's an affront to human dignity if you degrade the value of the money that they earn by doing work to, you know, earn a living, pay for food, blah, blah, blah. Right. So markets are gambling, but your entire existence is a gamble as well. So I don't think there's a problem with that. If you you know, did the thing that you were told to do, get on the hamster wheel, work your ass off, and you were able to, through hard work, build up a fiat nest egg, and you recognize that this situation is untenable in terms of, you know, a very small slice of the population getting very, very wealthy while everyone else is suffering, then it, it behooves you to get out of those fiat assets. Now, previously, there wasn't really an easy way to do that, but now we have crypto. So now, if you have fiat assets that are you know, you're saving vehicles or even just the little bit of fiat money that you're able to save, you can now sidestep. You can all you can vote for austerity to rebuild your your society into a more equi equitable situation, but at the same time preserve the little bit of wealth that you've able been, been able to accumulate in the fiat system by porting it over to crypto. And then, you know, once things have reset, then reevaluating, okay, well, maybe I am okay with owning a government bond that yields 10% if the economy is growing at 5%. That's a great return for me. I don't need to have this crypto thing. Maybe it's too volatile for me. And maybe I lost a little bit of money trading some particular coin. I just want to own some sort of bond in a government that I believe in and respect. Cool. Now, you know, you're getting paid to take that risk versus now you're not getting paid appropriately to take that risk.